Hey, my name is JC McCauley, and I want to really encourage you to take time out of your schedule and watch artistic expressions. I mean, they're going to give you all the information you need to know about the art scene here in Greater Hartford, in Connecticut, in fact, in New England. I'm sure they're going to have some guests from around the country, and maybe even some international guests. So check it out on your local TV station, Artistic Expressions, with George, my man, Milner. Hello and welcome to Artistic Expressions. I'm your host, Michelle Thomas, and you just heard Afro Blue by Alvin Carter Jr. and Oris Jenkins. Um, today's show is an exciting one. We're going to interview uh, Alvin Carter Jr. and find out what's going on in the city with him this year and uh, 
definitely some exciting stuff. So stay tuned and enjoy the show. Hold your head as high as you can, high enough to see who you are, little man. Life sometimes is cold and cruel, maybe no one else will tell you, so remember that you are black gold. Welcome back to Artistic Expressions with me, your host, Michelle Thomas. And with me today, I have Alvin Carter Jr. and Oris Jenkins. Uh, thank you for coming to the show. Thank you for having <laughs> us. <laughs> Definitely a pleasure. Um, so, the uh, Afro Blue, why'd you kind of start with that selection? Well, <laughs> that was Oris's idea, but it's actually been a part of my repertoire in a number of different bands over the years anyway, so it was a good call on yeah. Oris's part. That's my reason. I don't know Oris's reason. If he wants to share. Is I it like personal? You <laughs> like exactly. I like the song. That's all that matters. It's a great song and you know, especially with Alvin's roots in this community with yeah. African drumming and his father and you know I came up watching them doing all that, so I always like to do that song on most of my gigs just and then it reminds me of them. So I exactly. like to them too. Yeah. Very nice. So tell me, how did you guys meet? Like, what's the connection? <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> I think it was 2010. Mm -hmm. The Greater Hartford, um, no, the Hartford Jazz Society Jazz Cruise. Oh, okay. Legacy, the Keepers of Tradition, um, played the gig. Me. Daddy, yeah. Nita Zarif, Tony Lee, Warren Bird, Doug Long. I mean, we had the A team that day. <laughs> and um, we weren't the headliner. The headliner was actually Cyrus Chestnut with Desron Douglas, Abraham Burton, and Victor Lewis. I mean, it was ridiculous uh, the music that was going on that day. Yeah. And there was a, a time when I walked away from the bandstand because I wasn't playing okay and I thought it was Warren Bird playing oh, and okay. it wasn't it was a 15 year old Oris Jenkins Wow. Got you gonna remember Oris Jenkins got on the <laughs> piano and he was killing it right so I didn't notice anything at first I just remember think wow that's really good and and Nita comes up to me and says, come here, you got to see this, you got to see this. Right, right. And there's a little kid on the piano, and Warren Bird and Cyrus Chestnut are looking on like, you know, wow. Wow, yeah. Now, rumor has it. <laughs> well, first of all, that was his version of the story. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it must be, I said, rumor has it, but it must be true. He said he came up to me that day and introduced himself to me, and right. I was kind of, yeah, hi, how you doing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not realizing that he had known who my father was right, right. for years. Of course. And he had known who I was, you know, through my father because we had played at his church. But when I first remember meeting him and knowing who he was, right. was that day when you on the boat right, ride when he right. was killing it. Right. That's what he says. I tell you, I, I was a huge Stevie Wonder fan growing up. Yeah. Um, he was the, my reason for doing almost everything. And my favorite Stevie Wonder song is As. <laughs> but it's also his favorite Stevie Wonder song. And I heard somebody playing it. I was downstairs in the boat where they had all the tables. And I was like, who is playing my favorite Stevie Wonder song right, right now? <laughs> I ran up there as fast as I could. And it was this man no right kidding. here. And as soon as he got off the drums, I said, Mr. Mr. That's my favorite Stevie Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Mr. Mr. <laughs> he said, nice, bye. <laughs> See? But it's okay. Now, you said, you asked what's the relationship? Yes. There is a pianist in the greater Hartford area named Mr. Emery Smith. He's the grandpapa of all the pianists. And he is my mentor. Yeah. When I first started playing jazz professionally, he was one of the people that got me started. He is as responsible for me being a musician as Alvin Carter Sr. Really? 
That's a, that's that's his a great big, uncle. That's a big statement. That's his great uncle. That's huge. So <laughs> I made it my responsibility, probably against his will, that I was going to do for Oris what yeah. Emery did for me, which is play with me, right. make opportunities for me to perform with him, you know, give me pointers, you know, show me the way. I learned a lot, right. not only about music, but about how to operate with musicians right. from his great uncle. And that's exactly what I've learned from this man right here. That is amazing. That's beautiful. So yeah, this is really, I mean, I have five children, seven grandchildren. I got some musicians <laughs> in the family, but the one that I perform with, yeah. he's not my blood son. <laughs> He probably won't see me as a father figure. So I'll say uncle figure. I'll be his <laughs> uncle figure. Brother. Uh, his brother, Thank okay. You. Brother, right? I know that's right. But this is, you like, know, this, no is, way, this is my, I mean, I have a, a, a lot of Still? <laughs> musician friends <laughs> right. that are, I'm, I'm close to. Right. But only one that I kind of feel responsible for. I get it. And that's this young man. I right get there. it. I love it. That's an honor. It's it huge. Is. It means a lot. Oh, that's beautiful. I would love to have, you know, the kind of mentorship. <laughs> so much so that a friend of mine asked me for a keyboard player. <laughs> and I didn't want to tell him about Oris because <laughs> I was trying to keep him to myself. How many instruments do you play? I try to count. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. He said I try to count. I'm serious. It, um, I like any instrument. I normally say everything but brass. Okay. I cannot handle brass instruments at all. Yeah. But, but I started with woodwinds. Um, I did percussions for a while. Steel pan. I really love playing steel pan. Yeah. Um, then I fell in love with the guitar. After my aunt passed away, she left me her guitar. Yeah. Um, so then I, my mom always wanted me to be a pianist, though. Okay. So she so always kind of had, hey, here's here's some piano books. Here's a keyboard. Here's something. Else. And one one day I saw Alicia Keys on TV, and I was like, well. If she can be like a you know R and B pop star and be able to play the piano and go play with the crowd and then be on the keyboard, yeah. maybe I can do that too. So that's what kind of pushed me to learn how to play uh, okay. the keys more, right. more so than I had been before. Okay. And you read music and I learned how to read music um, in high school mm -hmm. um, through playing with uh, for the musicals that we did. Right. Um, okay. Yes. Good. I mean, yeah. yeah. He won't blow his own horn. But he's actually done, you know, even as a teenager, you know, arranging right. and, you know, some, some major gigs. And well, so. I mean, if he was 15 at that time. And could was, already play. Because I'm saying what you're describing is, right. uh, you know, you had these greats like checking them out like, oh, okay, he's up. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, well, he gave me the first of my jazz gigs. Right. But before that, I had done a lot of piano playing as far as uh, in the musical theater world and okay. um, also arranging and conducting for classical orchestras and things like that. Right. So um, yeah, there's just a lot that I like to do. I love to do it all. Beautiful. Do you feel that you have the opportunity to do that? You have the opportunity to, to fully share your gift? Um, I'm getting to that point, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's been a, it, having so many things to want to do has been a little bit difficult. Yep. Trying to focus on certain things because you can't do everything because then you're not going to be as good at certain things. Yep. So, just dealing with that has all been a part of me, you know, through becoming an adult and yep. all, all these things. Just I'm dealing with at the same time. So, right. he's focusing on vocals now. <laughs> That's where he's focusing. Okay. And I said, Put even though I together. met him, even though I met him as a piano player, right. he's he's making his mark as a vocalist, and it's been cool. Yeah. So how would you describe or is the energy or synergy between the two and, and given that opportunity? I mean, that's a very hard question for me. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I like to just, uh, my big comment is uh, I, I'm a musician and I play music. Yes. And that's it. <laughs> Whatever you need for that to be is, may not be what I needed for me to be right at that moment, but... Yeah. Eventually, I'll figure it out, and we'll see. It, it depends. It depends on the day for me. Yeah. I, I want to eventually be able to just go on a stage and do whatever I want um, in that moment. Pure freedom. Yeah. yeah. That's that's what I strive for as a, as, a, as an artist. That's I'm a big Nina Simone fan as well. Okay. And she used to say, you know, freedom 
the only the closest I've ever felt to freedom is being on stage. Right. That's what she always used to say, and I I concur with that. Um, Beautiful. That's what I'm aiming for. And so you you've played together how long? Actually, shortly after. Yeah. I, I, I don't think it was a year passed mm-hmm. before. Um, between the time I heard him right. and the time we played together. Okay. The next month, I should have had a rehearsal and he was the drummer. Really? It was, um, and I'm going to tell you a little more about sure. her later on. Uh, Dana Snell okay. uh, puts on a series of shows throughout the year, and I'm usually the house drummer or the house kunga player. And that year, um, she tapped Oris to be one of the keyboard players. Okay. And when we showed up to the rehearsal, he reminded me that I met him on the cruise. Right. But it was the rehearsal where I actually actually paid attention right. to him right. and the piano and what was going on and his ability, not just to play, right. but to help others do what they need to do yeah. in order to make the music sound like what it's supposed to sound like. And right. so that really... Um, really got my attention and that person I was trying to uh, keep him from for myself that's our good friend Kenny Hamber yeah. and when Kenny was looking for a keyboardist <laughs> I reluctantly uh, referred Oris and now Oris is Kenny's music director I'm his band leader and he's and the music singer his next album too oh, wow that's right wow that's right and all from sharing and you know kind of honoring that gift in each other. That's beautiful. He's got a lot of um, musical OGs <laughs> in his corner. <laughs> and it was funny. That's good. I didn't realize he had already known who Kenny Hamber was right. either. Right. And it was somebody that he looked up to. So when I mentioned that Kenny Hamber wanted to, he, he freaked out. Right. Wow, wait. I. Yeah, yeah. So it, it was. I mean, well, he knew it's about really you been, at fifteen. Why, you know? <laughs> but it, it was you just. Like, you don't know who's paying attention. <laughs> you don't. You you just you don't you know don't. who's paying attention. <laughs> no, you don't know. Who's paying right, attention. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's not paying attention. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, but he's starting to figure it out after half a decade or so. <laughs> right, right, right. So what you got coming up, man? Right. So we can talk about that because you guys working together. You're doing different things. So what is coming up? What's the big thing? Well, now I'm, uh, it goes back to me trying to figure out what my voice in the music industry is supposed to be. Okay. Because um, before I met Alvin and before I got involved with all the classical music I was playing and the musical theater stuff, I was writing R&B and hip hop songs. Okay. And I actually started as a rapper even before that too. So I just last year put out my first EP of those songs from way back then when I was 13, 14. Wow. Just last year. Now I'm trying to catch up and put out some music that I wrote when I was around 15 to 16 when I met Alvin, actually. Okay. So that record is just uh, being recorded right now. Um, it's going to be amazing. Not to toot my own horn, but... Let's toot it. Let's toot it. It's going to be bonk, amazing. Bonk. You know? I want to know. <laughs> and it's not because of me, but it's because of the amazing musicians I have that are in my band and that are just coming to have fun with me. And, right. you know, you can imagine I hang out with guys like this. Yeah. So the rest of the people I hang out with are also of this caliber of musicianship, and I just, I love it. Um, it's nice to be able to perform um, my arrangements and not have to worry about anything, because the right. people behind me got me. They you got know? you, right. I don't have to worry about, you know, making sure I have to play the right chord for this person, or, you know, I just sing my song and go home, and it's it's, right. it's really wonderful, because um, my music has a, a message, you know, it's a, there's a, a it's about oppression and it's about yes. you know freedom like we talked about and it's about a whole bunch of love it's so yeah. important in my music so I'd like to have, be able to focus on getting that to the audience and I have my band that can right. set me up behind me and it's great so you have a, a solid foundation yes. and a support system and you have all that stuff inside of you just a quick you know going back to that all that stuff where did that come from First, I'd say my mom. Yeah. My mom was a dancer um, in the 80s, and she knows all the music you could think of, <laughs> from musical theater to classical to jazz. She knows all this music, and she doesn't really, you know, play anything. She kind of sings, but she knows she knows everything. It's right. amazing. And she got that probably from, you know, 
her cousin is Cheryl Smith of the Artist Collective. Yes, who is, yeah, this is a relative of mine. That's right. <laughs> Cheryl Smith. If you have Happy done Friday. African dance in the city of Hartford exactly. Exactly. in the last 45 exactly. years, exactly. you were taught and by or taught by someone who was taught by <laughs> Cheryl Smith. <laughs> and of course, Cheryl and I share an uncle, Uncle yeah. um, Emery Austin Smith. <laughs> Who was the same guy that album was talking about? Oh that my took goodness! Him with so yes. Through the Smith family, and then also my <laughs> my aunt that I also talked about a little earlier, my mom's sister on her mom's side, um, Victoria Jenkins, who was a painter. Okay. And she was also a guitarist. So just um, an artsy family. Um, I grew up uh, kind of in East Hartford as well as Hartford. Okay. In the East Hartford public school system, and I had the best music teachers ever. Yeah. And they were, uh, that's how I learned how to be, you know, all over the place. Because my choral teacher from high school had his uh, master's in orchestral conducting, but then was an awesome jazz drummer. Right. But then was a, a hip-hop producer as well. And oh, then, goodness. But he was my choral teacher. So things like that taught me how to be versatile. So you just have a rich background. Absolutely. Uh, you, have, you know, it's just this, it just sounds like this whole bubble, this whole I thing is surrounded. So I blessed you to grow up really in this. really are. You know, and I was born right down the street from here at St. Francis. That's amazing, yeah. It's, it's amazing here. Hartford right. is incredible. Yeah, there's a lot of talent. That's why we're doing this. There's so much talent. Absolutely. And uh, it, it, I'm just, I mean, I really, even through this, finding out how interconnected everyone is. Like, mm -hmm. you know, just dropping the name Cheryl Smith. Like, you know, that's family. <laughs> and, it, you know, everyone knows everyone. <laughs> but it goes so much deeper, right? It's just all these you know, beautiful connections, but people re Absolutely. reach out to each other and nurture each other along. Absolutely. So. I also got to shout out my church, um, yeah. St. Michael's, um, on uh, on Capon Street, yeah. Capon and Clark, um, where I first met his father. Okay, who right. Who would come play at our Black History of Mass. Oh, goodness, yes. Every, every um, year. And that's where Ellsworth I'm, Grant. <laughs> Ellsworth <laughs> Grant. And the great thing is being, being Catholic, you know, that's traditionally, you know, more of a classical style of music happening. Right. But we had Ellsworth Grant on the organ. So mixing that <laughs> style with the, you know, the church gospel, right, he right. also can play jazz too. So that also helped me be very versatile right. throughout the genres, learning all of that. So I was, and I, I was baptized there. So I've been there, you know, right. so, listening to that, listening to Ellsworth Grant for 20 years. Wow. He's probably my biggest influence, honestly. Wow. Subconsciously. <laughs> so what's on, what's going on? So what's the what's happening? I'm working on the album. It's going to be called okay. Soar. Okay. Um, and it will be out definitely in 2015. Um, it's going to, I have three rappers featured on it. I have another vocalist featured on it with me. My 11-piece band is on it. And musicians from, you know, all over the place. New York, Massachusetts. Yeah. Arizona, my, one of my trombone players from Arizona, and it's it's going to be really really nice. Okay, I'm good. really proud of it already. Right. Uh, almost completely live, you know, recorded. It's, a, it's my first jazz record, really. Right. So I'm excited about that. And good. Yes. Yeah. yeah. One of your favorite tunes is going to be on it, Anatolian Sunset. <laughs> I wrote. Um, he wrote it. <laughs> I wrote I it in 2010, it. just before I met you. I wrote that song, so and he's always loved it. So yeah. Beautiful. Okay. I'm so excited. we'll we have to keep you uh, in our radar and <laughs> follow you what you're doing because yeah. it sounds like you're going to go really far. <laughs> took the words right out of my mouth. That's exactly what I was going to say. Keep your eyes and ears open uh -huh. for Oris Jenkins. I have something to say and y'all are going to hear it. Like, what do you, what do you, what do you tell me? You gonna remember what we're saying? As soon as I met, I'm like, I'm in. What are we doing? Here we go. I love it. Yes. So, what would you would you like to say to him on any level? Just as far as his. Well, he knows I love him. Right. He knows that. He knows whatever he's doing, I have his back. If there's any way I can contribute, I will. He already knows that. Funny story. <laughs> he had a concert at the Cultural Center in East Hartford. Yeah. And it was raining cats and dogs, just buckets of water falling out of the sky. But I rode my bike to bike. see his concert because <laughs> I wanted to be there because I was just so enamored. You know, when you right. when you find somebody who does what you do and they, they, they take it on the, the way that you do, yeah. you know, that, that blows you away. That's why his uncle fell in love with me because he just saw that I wanted it. I wanted right. to play. Right. You know, what are we doing? When are we, when's the next? Do, do I have to drive? Who's driving? Right. So when I see him 
and I play with him and I, and I look at what he's doing, I actually have to stop myself and remind myself, I'm not his dad. Yeah, yeah, I can't yeah, be yeah, telling yeah. him right. what to do. <laughs> but I look on the way a dad looks at, like, right. like okay. I, the way I know my father must look at me sure. when yeah. he sees me playing and he knows how, you know, the contributions he made right. or just having me in the right place at the right time around the right people. And that's what happened and one with him. Flourish, yeah. So if I uh, had to think of something new to say, because yeah. everything I just said, <laughs> he already knows, uh, it wouldn't be anything new. It's the same stuff. Yeah. I love you. Keep it up. And you know me and Sharice have your back. Thank you. Right. And those feelings are just as mutual as you could understand. <laughs> and I, just really quickly, the funny thing that I, I had to say in response to that is that I didn't even really want to play piano that much. Oh, really? But because yeah. I looked up to this man so much, to get a chance to be on stage with him, I don't care what I had in my hand. Wow. As long as I get, got to make music with somebody that knew as many Stevie Wonder songs as me. Exactly, right. <laughs> but it was, it was just incredible. I love you so much too, Alvin. Thank and you so much. And to share that connection, that is beautiful. So we'll definitely, like I said, keep you know, keep you on our radar and see how you just evolve and emerge. And uh, beautiful. Well, I'm thank you for being on our show. Thank you for it's having me. Great to meet you. Likewise. And um, I love. I mean, I just love artists. Period. And just that fervor, and they have that inside of them. You see that glow, and when it comes out, and you have that glow. You have that. You know, you're gonna do some stuff, you. and you got this guy in your corner, so you know you can't lose. <laughs> That's so right. thank you so thank much you so for much. that. Now I'd like to perform for you the Marvin Gaye classic, "What's Going On," Alvin Carter my good friend, Oris Jenkins.
Welcome back. Um, I'm here with Alvin Carter Jr. Nice to have you. Thank you for having me again. <laughs> yes. Um, so I want to pick your brain because there's so much to Alvin Carter Jr. <laughs> that I want to know. Um, it was a definitely pleasure and honor to have your father on the show, Alvin Carter Sr. I mean, he just kind of <laughs> glows when he walks in the room. And so, you know, having you here is, you know, equally as exciting. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, speaking of that, like, you know, being a part of, you know, Alvin Carter Sr., you know, he has this huge... <laughs> There's so much about him. What, what does that mean for you? Like, how do you kind of fit in that hole? That actually, that's an evolution. Yeah. It went from, um, he was bigger than life yeah. when I was a little kid, because daddy is right, bigger right, than life right, anyway. Right, right. Um, I would have to say after his mother, my grandmother, yeah who is like my absolute 100% favorite person, you know, Jesus Christ, right, right. Gertrude Lockley, <laughs> you know what I mean? I know that's right. Uh, my father, um, because of the way he lived and the people he interacted yeah. with and me pretty much being a fly on the wall, Yeah. it wasn't so much what he said, you know, do this, don't do that. Right, right, it was right. more of being in the vicinity of all of this cool stuff that was taking place. Right. Dance, music, drama. Yeah. Um, I grew up in the Bronx. I lived in the Bronx until I was 13. Okay. And even though he was not living with me, he was still there all the time. Right. And so, of course, you know, everybody knows him as a kunga player. Yeah. So that was, of course, my first instrument. And it wasn't so much lessons as much as it was the guys were around right. playing, so and so you're just I was there. Absorbing, absorbing, absorbing. It's that, and then it's also the specific. And then it comes to the do this, don't right, do right, this, right. do that. But because you that. found, because you had an interest. I had an interest. Just, would he have done that anyways? But he. It's what happened was, I wouldn't leave. Right. I kept hanging around. Right. He kept saying. The grown-ups are over here. Go over there. But I kept wanting to be where the guys were. They were playing the drums, and I wanted to be there. Right. And so um, finally he said, okay, you can play, but you can't play around. I love it. So you can play, okay. but you can't play around. Right. And that led to just being around Jackie McLean, yeah. Mixer Sean. Daoud Kareem, Cheryl Smith, yeah. Dolly McLean. It, it just wow. led to being around key people in the arts right. without being starstruck. Right. To me, they it was Mr. Family. Jackie, that's people. Right. Yeah. Miss Cheryl, yep. Miss Dolly. You know, right. Yep. It, that's exactly how it was. It was like family. Yep. And as a teenager, I remember I wanted to be Sammy Davis Jr. I wanted to dance, okay. sing, act, and play. And I realized early on, I could dance really well. I could act really well. But I couldn't sing to save my life and the lives of the people I love. <laughs> We're going down, that's it. I had a bass voice at an early yes. age. Okay. So people would put me in situations where all I had to do was use the bass voice. But I'm... <laughs> I'm a frustrated singer. I always tell all my friends, if I could sing, we would already be rich. Because I know how to behave on stage. Right, I'm just right, not a singer. Right, right. I married yeah, a singer. Same way. I love it. Yeah. I married a singer. Uh -oh. So that kind of gets me close. <laughs> my lovely wife, Sharice. Yeah. And uh, we met because I joined a band that her and our brothers were in. Yeah. But to get back to the influence of Alvin Carter Sr., that was literally it. He was a, a nexus. Yeah that drew other musicians to him. Yeah. And I was standing next to the Nexus. Yeah. And so in much the same way, uh, 
Boris right. was around everything. Sure. That's how it was for me. And then I just got involved. I started playing. I started uh, putting on shows. I started helping other people put shows on. Uh, it, I've been really blessed because from being associated with the drum has yeah. led to being a stage manager and a production manager, being a band leader. Um, I did a lot of acting in high school and in college. I did a lot of dancing in high school and in college. That helped me to uh, be a choreographer. Okay. You know what I mean? I've been blessed to do a lot of things in the arts. I don't have a Grammy, but so what? <laughs> I don't have an Oscar, but so what? Because for the whole time, I've been visiting Hartford and then living in Hartford. I've been involved in music, dance, or drama in some way, shape, or form. Right. And that is as a direct result of Alvin Carter Sr. Yeah. being the kind of person that those people wanted to be around. Right. Now, do you feel that like you have to live up to something? or? <laughs> Actually, for a while, it was the opposite. Okay. In other words, I didn't want to be Al's son. Right, right, I wanted to be right. my own man. I'm, right. I'm my own Alvin Carter. I wanted to I see. I don't know how you gonna pull that off, but. Well, and then you find out. You know that's not so bad. Somebody already paving yeah. the way. Even the Bible says, "Be the kind of person where the folks know you when you come to the gate." People knew him when he came to the gate. Absolutely. And so it became. They love him. It became. <laughs> Instead of, oh, that's Al's son. It became, oh, that's Al's son. Right. And then once they saw that I was serious about whatever it was, right. uh, it's really cool because having uh, somebody in your family or somebody that you're associated with that people respect, right. you start out in the positive. You yeah. don't start out at zero. You, do. you don't start out at the minus. You, you already do. start out at plus one. All you have to do is not mess it up. Plus 100 with that one. And even now, <laughs> my sons right. freak out because people know both of their grandfathers. People know my father, yeah. and people know my wife's father, Joseph Pritchett, in the music arena. Right. So they run into people that, oh, you Joe's grandson. Right. Oh, you're Abu's grandson. And so now, they show you some favor that you might not have gotten. <laughs> Just and all you have to do own. is not right. And all you have to do is not mess it up. <laughs> right. So, you know, there's that and then there's one of the coolest things I've been able to involve myself in for a very long time right. is being able to perform on the same stage with my dad. Oh yes. I went from being the last guy on the row of Kungas right. to now I hire him to play with me. He hires me to play with him. Yeah. And it's totally cool. A few different musical aggregations employ the both of us. Right. And so that's really cool. Being Alvin Carter Jr. as it relates to being the son of Alvin Carter Sr. Right. has been a major blessing. I didn't always see it that way, but I'm sure. glad I lived long enough to realize. Around, yeah, it's a blessing. And, and you know what's funny? Him and I don't see everything eye to eye. Sure. No, I know you don't. You know what I mean? <laughs> Right. Uh, as far as I'm right. concerned, you know, I know everything. Right. But he reminds me that I don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, it's it's it it is a blessing. Wow. Being Alvin Carter Jr. in the community sure. of Hartford, Connecticut. Right. So really well, how would you describe your difference, though? So we, you know, we have that, but then as you were emerging and you were coming, like, what was your rhythm and beat? What were you? Kind of moving to. He never sought to be in charge. Okay. I knew that in some of my endeavors, I would have to be in charge. Okay. Okay. He is more than happy in a supporting role. He doesn't always get to do that. Sometimes he's thrust into a leadership situation. Right. But I knew in some cases, I, I would have to initiate okay. that part of it because I wanted to play the music I wanted to play. Right. I wanted to choose the songs I wanted to choose. I wanted the musicians that I wanted to yeah. play with. And so when it's that, then yeah, you, you 
by virtue of what you're doing, have to take on the leadership role. Okay. And that really wasn't, uh, you know, he's not looking for a Grammy. Right, right, right. He plays whether he's gigging or not. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's involved in the music arena because he's a player and people know who he is, right. but he doesn't have aspirations of greatness. He's right. just somebody who's achieved a type of greatness that doesn't have anything to do with being an awesome percussionist, even though that's what he is. Right. People like the way he does what, what he, he does, does, and they like why he does right. what he does, and so they want to participate with him. They sure. want to be a part of what he's doing, or they want him to be a part what of what does. they're doing. With me, I can say that I have been blessed to be one of the people that people call when they want a percussionist. Right. This person wants a djembe player, I might get the call. This person wants a conga player, I might get the call. This person wants a drum set player, I might get the call. Right. I've been blessed in that respect. Okay. For the longest time, I was the young black jazz drummer. Right. Um, my good friend, Ralph Duncan was the one before me. Mm -hmm. I think he's probably four or five years older than me. So when I'm 16, 17, he's 21, 22, sure. he's showing me the ropes. <laughs> and then until my 30s, right. we didn't have, we had lots of young drummers, but they were mostly playing gospel, yeah. R&B. Yeah. We didn't have anybody that was really swinging. And then a few guys started coming up. Eric McPherson came through here, a fantastic drummer that's here now. Jonathan Barber mm -hmm. came through here, Curtis Torian, and it, you know people that, if I forget to mention them, I hope they don't sure, shoot sure, me, sure. but they're, they're, they're a bunch of them now. <laughs> There's a young lady now you need to know about, uh, oh. Jocelyn Pleasant. Okay. Fantastic multi-percussionist yeah. teaching drums in the area. And what we have in common, we're all artist collective babies. Right. Okay, yeah. Eric taught at Back the Artist the Collective. Yeah. I'm an original <laughs> drum student, not Clark Street. I was gonna say at the Windsor school, so Street. That's way, yeah. Before I mean, Clark everybody Street thinks then. Clark Street. I know, but that's Windsor why we Street it is when it. Yeah. So you yeah. know. And the drummers there back then, of course, are Alvin Carter Sr., Robert Bryant, yeah. uh, Dickie Evans, Chief Bay used to come up from New York. Uh, Neil Clark, Bradley, Obara, Wali, right. I mean, just tons right. of uh, drummers that played African drums. And they were all at the Artist Collective. Jackie yeah. McLean brought people in. Yeah. And then it's been continuing, you know, Steve Davis, trombonist, uh, Nat Reeves, you know, just a, a bunch of people. Mixa Sean. Yeah. The Artist Collective was really important mm -hmm. in my artistic experience. Okay. My wife is an original artist collective dance student. Nice. We knew each other back then and I didn't realize right. it. Right. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, Hartford is ridiculously populated, densely populated yeah. with tons of talent. Not just musical. I mean, <laughs> gee, nice. I wonder who put Jimmy on the wall <laughs> back there. So, you know, I mean, yeah, it it's not, talented. if you ask me about me, the conversation has to go to all these other people right. who've been an influence to me or I've been an influence to them because that's how it works. I can't talk about what I'm doing without calling attention to all the other fantastic people right. and events that are going on in the area that have been going on. In Would the you area. say, though, that um, because you have this strong sense of giving back and even taking or, you know, under your wing and, and just seeing that for its potential, and wanting to help and wanting to nurture. Again, it's the examples. Yeah, yeah. It's the examples. Inside the arts and outside the arts. Anybody from Carl Hodrick to Doc Hurley. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Stephen Holter. You know, just people, uh, George Thomas, people that you're around that are examples to you and you don't realize it until you're older. Right. Then, of course, all the musical influences, you know, from Jackie McLean to Paul Brown, uh, Donnie De Palma and the 880 Club and the guys from oh, that era. Club. Yeah, Matt Immersion, <laughs> Mike Duquette, Larry Natalie. I mean, I could go on right, right, and right, on right. and on and on and on and on right. and on and on. Singers, you know, uh, Margot oh, Hayes, Barbara oh, Fowler, Nita Zarif, Nikki Mathis, Kitty Catherine. Again, 
Yeah. We'd be here like, all day. Because you know and all the people, too. I figured out a long time ago, the more you make happen, the more there is going on. Yeah. Stuff going on I like artistically. That. I like that. People getting paid because they're a gig. So as soon as I learned how to produce a show, that's what I did. Right. I learned from Family Day. Earl Shabaka Shepherd and Charles Christie. Yeah. Putting on Family Day in Keeney Park. Park. I'm about to family say I'm like Family Keeney Day Park. in Keeney Park, that's you know, way. Thirtieth anniversary. Wow. This yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Two years later I started putting on concerts at Sigourney Park. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And people like Yvonne Harris to show you the way. Yeah. I mean, again, everything that I do is because somebody either showed me directly or I was able yeah. to watch and peep out what they were doing. Right. And got some advice here, got some technical expertise there. So, so then tell me about what's your center? Because, you know, there's, there's the external, right? Where you have all these people and you have an enormous amount of influence uh, from all of these people and, and who you've been around just from being your father's son. But you know what's what my your center, center is now? What is your Honestly. center? Honestly, what's your center? Jesus Christ. Let's go. That's my... Right. That's the focal point of everything. But what he's enabled me to do... Right has been to take the talents he's given me and utilize them and also mobilize the talents of other people. Right. Um, my wife and okay. I are, my wife and I are ministers and, you know, I have occasion to preach from time to time. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I used to come right here with uh, Elder Nora Wyatt. <laughs> Her and I would come and we would do Bible studies with uh, Elder Wyatt and Sharice would sing. Right. And, but, I didn't realize it back then. I okay. realize it now because of a closer walk right. than I had 20, 25 years ago. But it's all, God gives you abilities and he wants you to use them to bring him glory. And once I realize it's not to bring me glory, right. it's to get stuff done. Now, when I have your attention, I can say, right. have you heard about Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, as far as the arts community is concerned, it's literally been... My examples. Right. It's been people who have gone about trying to make stuff happen. And I just wanted to see stuff happen so I and others like me can get paid. Right. Yeah, I wanted great. to see stuff happen <laughs> so that little kids can. I saw free music as a kid. I Absolutely. want the little kids Jazz to see free front. music. That's right. You, you know what I mean? I, right. I had it. I don't want it to go away. Right. And so, you know, some people see me as kind of an activist because I'm always out there yelling about where's the money for the arts. But then on the other side, I know that art happens whether people pay for it or not. We That's just right. like to be paid for it because we have to eat. Right. But you paint. Sell it or not, That's you paint. Right. That's right. And that's, you know. Want to sell it, though. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> and I do what I do because that's how I'm made. Yeah. That's how that's God I'm made I me. Am. This is I take it in. I process it. I put it, it back. back. Yeah. Simple as that. Beautiful. Let's talk about the projects for what's coming up. Ooh. What's going on with Alvin Carter Jr.? I brought a list. Okay, let's go. I brought a list because it's very, <laughs> and again, it just shows the, the length the depth and the breadth, the breadth of what's of going Boston. on yeah. in the Greater Hartford community. Right. And I don't make it happen, I participate in it. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm the stage manager for the Greater Hartford Festival of Jazz. Okay. Oh, okay. And that has been a blessing. I've gotten to meet the jazz greats from back in the day up mm -hmm. to now, too many to mention. Mm -hmm. But I will say that if you'd like to help it grow, there's a series of fundraisers okay. taking place uh, at Jay's Crab Shack. Mm -hmm. And if you go to Hartford Jazz... Yes, yeah. yes, used to be Tinkers. Mm -hmm, yep. If you go to HartfordJazz.com, mm -hmm. there will be uh, a schedule, but I'm just going to share some okay. of the information. Yeah, okay. uh, February 21st, fantastic drummer friend of mine, Leave You Pop and Friends. Uh, March 14th, Warren Bird and the Bird Speak Ensemble. April 4th, Goza, Latin Jazz, mm -hmm. 
April 25th, the Nat Reeves Trio, May 16th, Ace Livingston, uh, bass phenom. And on June 6th, my birthday is June 1st, so this is part of my birthday celebration, the Alvin Carter Project will be at Jay's Crab Shack. You can buy the tickets online in advance. They're $10 a piece, and all the proceeds go toward helping the Jazz Festival to, uh, to grow and continue. I'm also playing with a group called the Crystal Blue Project. Um, we'll be at Ketchup and Mustard on the 27th of this month. That's East Harvard or is that Manchester? Uh, Manchester. Manchester. I'm playing with Kenny Hamber. I'm playing with the Afro-Semitic Experience. Um, I've just been blessed to play with so many different right. people. But right. the things that are coming up, you want to make sure that you deal with the Greater Hartford Festival of Jazz, yeah. uh, which would be the third full weekend in July. Family Day, the third full weekend in August. Sigourney Park, the fourth full weekend in August. Um, the just keep your eyes and ears right. to the ground. Go on Facebook, right. um, Google stuff. Now, do you have a website? I don't have a website. Okay. I have a Facebook page, Facebook. and I do okay. the events. Everything from Nita Zarif. Oh, the Baby Grand Series at the Harper yes, Public at Library. The March 29th, yeah. Alvin Carter, Emery Smith, and bass great Vishnu Wood. You want to be there. It's going to be unbelievable. Emery Smith, again, I can't say enough about him. Right. Just so much going on. You have your you know, year kind of laid Pretty out. much set out. And it changes. You know, um, Blackwell, uh, Blackwell Memorial's Black History Month celebration, February 28th. They actually asked me to sing. I couldn't believe it. No, That's right. No, so it's going to be fun. <laughs> Well, beautiful. I mean, I'm excited. I'm glad that you, you know, kind of brought the whole list. <laughs> so we'll make sure we put that out so that we have, you know, what's going on for the mm -hmm. year with you. That's a lot. <laughs> and but again, you're active. Thank you're you for crazy. having me. Absolutely. I, you know, you, this there's great. always been somebody I that I admired. Energy. and you Absolutely, know, just, yes. You know, that's right. Cool. We peeps. <laughs> Ever since you were people of goodwill groupie. Yeah, that was what, 25 years <laughs> yeah, ago? Yeah, something like that. Some, yeah, some crazy amount of time. But thank you so much for coming on. I mean, just your energy and what you're giving back. And, you know, it's a lot to take in, but it's a lot that you're giving out. And, I mean, I appreciate it. I just thank you so much for joining us. Um, Again, thanks for beautiful. having me, sis. Yes. Uh, so that is our episode for today, Artistic Expressions, with me, your host, Michelle Thomas. We had Arvin Alvin Carter Jr. with us. Um, beautiful, beautiful musician. There's a lot going on this year, so we'll you know keep you posted. Um, just you know, stay tuned for more. Always remember to support the arts and your local artists. And thank you for joining us. Beautiful. <laughs> Hold your head up Don't give up You are black gold You are You are hmm. Black gold Black gold Black gold Black gold Greetings. I am Alvin Abu Carter Sr. This is a shout out to Artistic Expressions and I wholeheartedly support the arts. Hi, I'm Alvin Carter Jr., disciple of Christ, husband, father, and musician. I want to give a big shout out to Artistic Expressions and I want to let everyone know I support the arts. Shout outs to Artistic Expressions and I Support the arts. This is El Mitchell Sean Rossi. <laughs>